The successful three-day visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping to India from 17th to 19th of September promises to transform the two fastest growing economies by creating a new paradigm in the bilateral relationship, besides bringing about changes in the global strategic landscape. The two countries, which account for 35% of the world's population, have decided to align their development strategies. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi put it, every inch covered by both countries can rewrite the history of humanity and every mile crossed will go a long way in making this planet a better place. Indeed, sincere efforts were made by the two leaders to move ahead when they sat down to discuss all the substantive issues on the table. Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphatically voiced his concern over the transgressions on the line of actual control and underscored the need for the early resolution of the boundary question. Seema par shanti aur sthirta ke liye LAC ki clarification bahut bada yogdaan de sakti hai. The Chinese president endorsed his views that LAC has to be demarcated so that such incidents do not impact bilateral relations. Both the leaders agreed that boundary issue has to be resolved at the earliest. The new strong and sensitive government, which is in a proactive mode, signed a plethora of agreements with China. Ranging from high-speed trains to peaceful uses of outer space, new route to Kailash Mansarovar from Nathula Pass will be open for the Indian pilgrims. It was also decided to begin discussions on civil nuclear energy cooperation that will bolster broader cooperation on energy security. Two industrial parks will be set up in Gujarat and Maharashtra. The Chinese also made a commitment for a five-year economic and trade development plan. China has pledged $20 billion in infrastructure and manufacturing sectors. During the visit, Prime Minister Modi invited the Chinese firms to make in India and set up manufacturing infrastructure in India and not make the country merely a hub for exports. Giving a major push to his vision unveiled in his address to the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort on the Independence Day to come and make in India. Come, make in India. The idea is to make the Made in India tag a synonym for excellence. Greater market access to Indian goods in China and bridging trade deficit were the thrust areas. Besides the warmth and bonhomie that was witnessed between the two most powerful leaders of their respective countries, it was the willingness to engage on all contentious issues that promises to give a directional change to the relationship that has witnessed several irritants in the past. Chinese President Xi extended an invitation to Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit China early next year. With trust on promoting people-to-people -people contacts, 2015 has been designated as Visit India Year and 2016 as Visit China Year. For the first time, making a departure from protocol, Prime Minister Modi chose to personally receive the Chinese President and the First Lady in Gujarat. The idea was to showcase the beauty and the development beyond Delhi to the visiting dignitaries. Chinese President Xi commenced his visit from the land of the Mahatma and the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi that has become a global business and investment hub and a role model for other states. On his 64th birthday, Prime Minister Modi, who was earlier in the morning blessed by his mother, spent the rest of the day with Chinese President Xi and the First Lady Peng Li Yuan. He played a perfect host to them, first when he moved around with them in an exhibition at the Hyatt Hotel, sharing the rich Buddhist heritage of Gujarat and later spending the evening at the Sabarmati Riverfront. For the two leaders who pledged to tread the path of peace, the Sabarmati Ashram provided an ideal setting Clad in a Khadi jacket, Chinese President Xi was garlanded with Khadi threads by the Prime Minister and was also presented a book 
Gandhi at Ahmedabad, published by the Ashram, and a historic picture of Gandhiji's famous Dandi March. On the banks of Sabarmati River, the Chinese president and the first lady enjoyed folk dances of Gujarat. They also had a feel of the traditional swing that was earlier shared by Chinese President Xi and Prime Minister Modi. Lending a touch of soft diplomacy, Chinese First Lady Peng Liyuan charmed the Indians on the first day itself by singing the famous number Avarahu in Gujarat. Peng, who was an icon, performing artist and a folk singer, visited the Tagore International School in Delhi and won the hearts of the school children with her calligraphic skills.